my way to the airport, traveling to Germany. I was invited by Jan Schäfer. Schäfer, not quite sure how you pronounce that. Long tuning. I'm gonna meet some really interesting and knowledgeable people, Jan included, and see some cool places. Sorry for the shaky footage. I realized operating a gimbal whilst driving a car was not the most optimal situation. I've also realized something that will give me superpowers. And here it is. The rid yourself of anxiety while filming around other people free card. A map box. My theory is that I won't feel awkward now because I'm a professional. Rather people will feel... Why is it... Why is it beeping? I'll have to do it like this then. So what I was saying is, now I won't feel awkward. Rather people will feel awkward around me because I'm a professional on a professional mission. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice hey, to meet you. Alex. Alex. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to We want to do the same stuff with our camera while we do it later. Yeah, Jerry. I'm, yes, I'm yes, just yes. trying to make this work. I'm, uh, I'm not too used to filming around people and in public. So, uh, yes, we will see but, uh, how it works. Uh, maybe really cool. we could do some kind of an introduction, maybe. Like uh, who you yes. are and who you are. And, uh, yes, yes, we do it. But first, but, uh, I have to go to the toilet. Yeah, okay. Okay. I did learn some German in school. I um, I remember uh, I can say Ich bin du bist er sie es ist. Okay. Uh, wir sind. Uh, wir seid. Wir seid. <laughs> and that's about it. Okay. That's everything. So you haven't been long to school. No, uh, well, many years, but I forgot everything. Mm -hmm. uh, never, uh, never interested me. Uh, but I went to, this is actually my first time in Germany for 20 years. Okay. It was when I was 18, that was the last time I visited. Okay. I was the, went to Berlin. Holiday? Yeah, no, uh, it was a school trip with, um, with mm -hmm. the German, uh, German class. Also, uh, but you've been, you were a journalist for some time. But you also worked for Aprilia. I, I even worked as a newspaper journalist for oh, yeah. a year and a half. Oh, and then the motorcycle magazine brought me away. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I knew you were, uh, as we talked about, you worked at a motorcycle magazine. Mm -hmm. That I knew. I didn't know you worked also worked for a newspaper. <laughs> um, yeah. No, when I got out of school, there were too many engineers. Yeah. I, I uh, studied... Uh, Mechanical engineering, out of, from school, yeah. out of a job, and the neighbor of me was uh, director of a pipeline company. Okay. And he lost his driving license. Oh, okay. Again. Again. <laughs> so I was a private driver for three months. Okay. <laughs> and had to, then I had to go to the army. Yeah. And after that, I started working with him, uh, designing things. On, uh, yeah. And uh, one day he needed uh, a, a machine driver for a side beam. Oh. It's like, do you know what it is? No. It's, it's like the bulldozer uh, with the hoist at the side. Oh, okay. So you pick up a, a, a pipe, yeah. bring it to the previous pipe, and, and then build it. Tip it around. Yeah. Yeah. Pipes like this, oh, 40, okay. 42 inches. Yeah. When it's raining, you can crawl in them. <laughs> I've done that for a couple of years, yeah. made good money, and then uh, most pipelines were finished at the time, yeah. so no more jobs, and 
I had a girlfriend, and her husband was uh, editor of a daily uh, newspaper. I think, I, just, I think I'll move the camera there. Mm, it's uh, out of a job, and uh, the newspaper man needed somebody to bring the correspondence in the neighbor villages okay. every evening. I've done that. Yeah. And then they offered me a job as a journey journalist. Oh, yeah. I've done that for a year, maybe a bit longer. Yeah. And then uh, the editor of the motorcycle magazine huh, was just starting and needed a second man when he came to me. Oh yeah. And then you started for... Uh, I, I've been uh, racing motorcycles, 500 cc. Yeah. So that's how we got my name. Oh, okay. okay. Then you worked for the magazine. Mm -hmm. and then, but how, uh, when did you get involved with Aprilia and Jan Thiel? And mm. I followed John Thiel from 1964 onwards. Okay. Then, <coughs> first I was at a distance, just admiring what he did. Yeah. Later we got to talk. When I was with the magazine, I visited him in, in, in Spain, at Botago. And at, at that time I had very good relations with Jan, yeah. with Botago, and with Fafin Kreitler. And they were the biggest competitors in the class. Mm. I knew. Before the uh, start of the season, the inhibits of both engines. Okay. Yeah. And then, then it's, it's very difficult not to talk. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, after Boltaco, Jan went to uh, Garelli, yeah. Italy. And then uh, one year Rumi, that was not a success. He couldn't oh, work there. Uh, the, Mr. Rumi. He thought he was the only one who knew everything. Oh, yeah. he was just, we were just there to do what he, felt, oh, yeah, he told okay. us. Yeah. So, yeah. And then uh, Jan went to Aprilia. Yeah. And I, I kept uh, in contact and advising him and writing programs for him and so on. Yeah. Because cool. you're like the, like the, always, well, I've always seen you like the theory guy. Like the, yeah. And, uh, Really but he also got, is able got, to do it. I've got two left hands. <laughs> two left no, no, hands, no. <laughs> but I'm left handed. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's really able to do a, a lot of technical stuff also. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I'm, um, mm -hmm. I'm not the, the, the 500 ways, uh, bike I was racing, I built it myself, monocoque frame. Mm. Converted it to a rotary inlet. Nice. It, nice. Was the, I, uh, it was the uh, smallest, the lowest, the lightest, and the most unreliable 500 in Holland. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how it goes. <laughs> I've always felt like uh, at least you've uh, been one of the best at explaining things when I've been reading like discussions about I, things. I, I like to think I, I can do that. Yes. Yeah, you're great at uh, conveying what you're uh, trying to convey mm -hmm. uh, with words. <laughs> yeah. yeah, written words. Yeah. Written words, yeah. yeah. Like I told you, I, I'm not much of a talker. I like, I prefer to write. Yeah. I can take my own time, choose. Exactly, and you can, uh, yeah. The CC class where you had to make everything yourself. That has that had to be like a really interesting, yeah. interesting uh, class. Yes, I really. Um, you can go really fast with a 50 CC. Yeah, you can. Yes. Uh, tomorrow we will also meet um, Frank Ziprian. He's an old racer and he built his own bikes, his own gearboxes, his own engines, cool. and do it by himself with casting and stuff like this. Nice. He's, um, I think, now about uh, 67 years old, something like this. But he's really a specialist. He's younger than me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yes. I, I, I met Frank the first time a couple of years ago. I was uh, staying with Jan. Yeah. And we were going to a Chinese restaurant. I think it was Italian. I don't know. Yeah. And he said, "There's also a friend of of me coming." To meet you, yeah. I, I've never heard the name. And Jan said he's, he's brilliant, but he's never coming out of his hole. It's, it's really <laughs> something special that he's coming now. <laughs> and it was a really sympathetic guy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he turned out to be uh, the world's fastest trabant tuner. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, what 
Wapplungen hebben al zo geleerd dat hij raced 50 en 80 cc, cast his own engines. Oh ja, dat is die guy. En hij doet het bij de eerste Franse periode. Hij is really een great technician, build his own exhaust, and oh, build nice. exhaust for other people. And also, um, tune some uh, turbo engines, 720 cc, one cylinder two stroke engines. Oh, you yeah. notice? Yeah, yeah. It's for sidecar racing. Yeah, I've seen them. Uh, and yeah. tomorrow or uh, two days, you have the possibility to ride one of these pieces. Oh, I, cool. I, I will do it. And you will be with us, and we will. If you if you try to start the engine, maybe you break your leg. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Be uh, careful. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let him start the bike, and then everything else. I think that's probably a good idea. <laughs> I, <laughs> I have a nice story. Uh, I think two years ago, I said to Fritz, we have been to a racetrack. Hey, we do to do some uh, we do some hop riding. And he say, oh, Jan, I don't know. I'm not 70 anymore. <laughs> oh, I'm not 70 anymore. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> then we have to think about it again. <laughs> Come in and find out. <laughs> this is the beautiful guy you rode with who set you the sleeve really? and stuff like this. Hi. Hey. Hi. Lando. Simpson. Yes, yes, Simpson. Yeah. Yes. That's the uh, so it's uh, I think about it's about uh, 95% of our working is uh, is Simpson. Simpson. Yes. So that's a really like that's huge in Germany. Yes. It's not you, you don't see much Simpson stuff outside of Germany, I think. I've never seen that in Yeah, in, in Hungary, uh, Poland. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Nee, nee, not to film. Maybe it's just Norway and Sweden that's been left out of the. Um, <laughs> they say about it in, in Germany is about uh, three million of, of uh, Simpson that's uh, driving on the streets. Okay. Yes, okay. that's license. It's, for uh, yeah, nice. That's that's uh, really a lot of power. Uh, the, 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 the highest power we had at it was about uh, 38. 38. 38 horsepower. Yes. From, uh, in a bike which is about uh, 70 kilograms. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really too much because it's short and you always do a wheelie. <laughs> it's crazy, well, but it's... Like, like your dead fish. <laughs> dead fish yeah. Long tuning. Long tuning, yeah. I yeah. started tour. Uh, I show you the company Long tuning here in Germany. And we do uh, mainly stuff for Simpson. Mopeds, yeah. 50cc, uh, up to 130cc and also a lot of uh, racing. Uh, this is our branding factory. We do uh, all the cylinders here. Right. <laughs> this is Mike. Sometimes he's really nice guy. <laughs> Especially today. Sometimes nice. <laughs> Put another bearing on it um, and another motor and stuff like this to make really a completely perfect hole. So this is a bore. It's a the boring machine. Uh, what is it, or is it a yes, yes, it is a boring machine. Boring, yeah. It was a milling machine before, yeah. and now we no, only it's... use it for boring the cylinders. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it makes really cool and nice, perfect holes. Perfect holes. Yes. So here we have some lathe machines, we have uh, about three lathe machines at the moment and we are be doing all the stuff that have to be done. This is uh, out of GDR. At the end of GDR, really nice and stable lathe machine. Yeah, it's uh, quite a big, bit larger than, uh, than my machine. Yes, yes it is. Uh, but it's really cool. Yeah, really nice. And so here you, here you like prepare cylinders for for boring or like yeah like this uh, to, to to make the angle right and stuff like this oh, okay uh, yes for boring and the cool thing on this lathe is uh, all the all the Russian submarines have yeah. this lathe in the yeah in, in the submarine in the oh, to, cool. to work uh, if they need to do something with it um, there are a lot of uh, yeah submarines who have this lathe machine nice inside nice so we sell the whole submarine and then. Put it then <laughs> you buy the whole submarine and take yes, the lathe. Yes, yes. Cool. This is where we clean everything. A lot of Simpson cylinders, a lot of stuff. Honing machine, but it's, uh, we repair it at the moment. Uh -huh. We have another one. And here's the place for walking. And coffee. 
Okay, coffee, yeah. coffee and walking here. Yeah. Uh, engines all day long, Simpson, Simpson, Simpson. So how long have you been uh, running this company? Uh, since 2007. 2007. The company, uh, the company is working since uh, 1994. Yeah. Um, the last guy who had it, he, he was called Andreas Lang, um, and I buy it, the company from him. I worked there for I think about four or five years. They say, okay, I don't want to do it anymore. We have been two guys, and now we are 16. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. from two to 16. Yes, yes, yes. A lot of work, oh, yeah. but it's really cool because uh, we, all these guys here do a nice job. So there's this guys. Making a cylinder at the moment, we can go in, it's no nice. problem. Yes. And this, are these castings or...? Uh, uh, this castings come oh, from that's Spain. That's more like it. More transfers. Yeah. This casting, you can put it out, it's no problem. Mach mal. You're not able to? Lass du schon mal Yes, I damage it. So these are from Spain? Yes, these are from Spain. Really. It's quite uh, like a special transfer arrangement. Yes, it is, it is, it is. It's, it's, it's the same case, but yeah. it's another cylinder so with a, with a yes, port channel porting. They have like this uh, very wide, but not so, like narrow, but wide but transfer you, arrangement. You don't think about how much horsepower <laughs> comes through this little place. Yeah. If you have a, a bigger bore, it's about 49 millimeters. Yeah. And when we did our tuna battle every year, we had about, we had about, with the same case, with the same case in the bottom, you don't you don't have to change it, or you. Um, wasn't allowed to change the case. You weren't allowed <laughs> to change the case. Yes, um, it was about uh, 26 horsepower. 26 horsepower. Yes. From, um, and it's really and it's really small yeah. case on this place when you, when you pour it bigger. A lot of air going through. Uh, yes, and then we and after the tuna battle, we try to make it bigger. Yeah. And it, it was worst. Was worst. Yes, it was yeah. worst. So then you think about okay, how big you need it. Really yeah, because that's what I'm thinking. Maybe I'm losing too much velocity in my transfers now because they're yes. so wide, yes. so huge. Maybe. Uh, yes, I, I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> so, was it just from? Oh, hi, sir, Alex. Sebastian, hey, well, this is our engineer here. We do all the stuff. He, he's, he's a crazy guy. It's a crazy he's, racing, he's racing with us and he's doing all this shit like this. <laughs> but this is not our own brain shaft, it's from another company, but um, they are not stable enough. Yes. So this is like offerings to the God of Speed. Yeah. Yes, yes, this is uh, what he's damaging while riding. <laughs> it's, from, it's from last year, no, no, no. Okay, so you're, you're the test pilot. Yes. <laughs> the, the engineer and test pilot. And, and Chris. Crash test dummy. <laughs> this, this is something from a from a subframe from the rear, but it's broken while crashing. <laughs> oh, it's expensive part. So this is the second. There's nearly nothing. Here's the, 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 the entry for our customers, but it's not. It's quite not finished because um, yes, we don't need it by now, but uh, we want to open it this year. Yeah. So Alex, I want to buy your engine from you, please. Sell me engine, Simpson engine. I need a big one. I need a lot of power, and I need uh, something that's two stroke suffering. Unfortunately, uh, I haven't got any engines ready. At the okay, moment. okay. Might be something ready in like 30, 40 years. Maybe. 40, 40 years. <laughs> maybe. maybe. <laughs> okay, uh, I can wait. No problem. Yeah. Right, right. So another lathe and another yes, lathe. It's the same one. We have same two of it. Yes. Two. And I really love it. It's really so stable and so precise. This is something we only use um, when we on the Simpson cylinder. You have a you have a coil yeah. for the exhaust, and uh, it's always it always gets damaged. Yeah, the screw on exhaust. Yes. And yeah. This this lathe we uh, use for repairing it. So our room for welding and stuff like this. We put some exhaust and welding. Yeah, nice. Uh, we also do um, suspension for enduro and Voodoo cross bikes. Yeah. Um, since 2013, we make about uh, uh, seven German championships, one European championship, and a lot of other championships with enduro bikes. But at the moment, we don't have a mechanic for this job. Oh, okay. And mm, but you're building like building and rebuilding and tuning suspension. Yes, yes. With yeah. all that stuff, we have a little a little uh, dyno for the springs. Oh, nice. And uh, vacuum machines for uh, filling the shocks and oh, stuff cool. like this. Nice. But at the moment we don't do it because we don't have an employee who no, can exactly. do it good or have time for it. So at the moment we only do Simpson stuff. Oh, okay. so this is your uh, like packaging and shipping. The storage. So, storage. So, yeah, so yeah. packaging, shipping. This is the area from where we set all our products and uh, have the storage. Yes. There's a lot of parts. Yeah. Whatever you need for a Simpson engine, I think we have it. We have our own crankshafts. We have 
a lot of own, uh, our own pixels. A lot of pistons. I know uh, a Nosht guy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who are interested in pistons, I think. This is Have you got yeah. the body kit? Uh, the emote piston? Those meant for um, those meant for the Kaidle. Yes. 50 cc. Yes, uh, it's a 40 millimeter uh, yeah. emote piston. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we with a narrow skirt. You know emote? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to him. If you yes. like, I don't know him, but uh, no, this would also be a nice adventure for you to, to, to visit Emot because he's a really nice guy and has yeah. a lot of experience with old race bikes. Yeah, yes. I've, um, and he's a friend of us. We yes, can call yeah. him and you, and yeah, you can start, visit him uh, somewhere. The Freetech 50 clash. Oh, he started that. He started it. Okay, he I became I'm, European champion twice. Oh, himself. I knew he was like, really involved in the racing. I didn't know he started the, the whole thing. Yes, but but, but he's. Um, for a video like yours to visit him, it would be a nice trip for you. Yeah, sure, that would be. Yes, would he's be a cool, cool guy. Yeah, actually, I'm I'm planning now to make an insert to make the for testing with a smaller crankcase volume, mm -hmm. and then I would need. <laughs> a, I did something like this. Yeah, yeah. a shorter, so something with a with something like, like 20 millimeters would be better because then I could add a yes. spacer with mm -hmm. the yes. volume taking bits yes. without. And, and you can have a long rod. Yeah, I'm already running a 90 millimeter rod. That's you know. good. Yeah, it's the longest one I could uh, find that was was attached to a crankshaft. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's one of two dinos. I kind of think one in my area where I work all day long, uh, but this is here in our. Yes. So this is. Uh, I've seen a few videos of you running a dino, but that's your dino at home. Yes. Yeah. At home, I have a dino with, with, a, with a more a bigger ratio. So, uh, what's the size muscle again? Inertia. Uh, inertia. We have a back, much bigger inertia at home, and this is for our mopeds because um, at home I test more race bikes, also somewhere in the 600 cc and stuff like this, and we need more inertia. Yeah, exactly. So, you need. Uh, yes. And so here it's for our mopeds, for the smaller bikes, it's it's, it's way better. So. Yeah. This is the this is the um, dyno we buy about 2001. So we have okay. it for a long time now. Yeah. It's really important to measure the temperature on the belly while riding and then to use yes, exactly get long it's, enough run times for Yes, that, that run time is long enough and this is often a problem. And yeah. when I change it, it was really like this. The engine was so much faster on the track yeah. when I got the ignition curve and, and make everything perfectly fit to it. Usually they need big packages because they make they make forms out of elephant assholes. Enough? <laughs> <laughs> Might be a little bit too much. Yeah, a uh, yeah. quarter, quarter of it is enough they can yeah. do. There? <laughs> this one's for you. Thank you. Please. Can I can measure my ports for the first time ever. Yes, yes, you can try. <laughs> nice. Really nice. Standing on a, it's standing on a uh, Schrottplatz. What's that? Schrott? Uh, uh, it's standing on the place where all the rubbish is. Yeah. It's standing oh, in a corner, and somebody say, "Hey, you, you need, you, you need everything." Oh, garbage dump. Was yeah. rusty and stuff like this, and no break. But I said, "Yes, I, I need it." But what, what's the problem? It's, it was Steiner chef. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to throw it away. What? Why this? Yeah, we don't need it anymore. Okay, I go there. <laughs> Eight guys, eight guys, push it from the bottom on a uh, hanger, anhanger. Uh, no. Yeah, hang, same word in Norwegian. Hanger, hanger. Okay. Hanger. And I think uh, big guys here, Holly Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> and then the the boss came. My son is a fan of your videos. <laughs> okay. uh, what do you want to have for this? I don't know. Give me a ignition and a head. Okay. With the uh, stuffing. Yeah, that's stuffing. Too perfect for two stroke stuffing. <laughs> and with a stuffer for the piston also. Yes, it's really it's really and you can see it, I, I, I do it like this, that you have enough space that if it's open, if yeah, the, if the, if the reed is open, that it's 
really, really, really hard to come by, but it's really... But ha have you done any testing? No, I want to test it. I yeah. have no time. That would be really interesting for me to know, to see yes. what the difference is. Because I'm like, to me it makes, it really makes sense that a large crankcase will, will be beneficial. But uh, it's also problematic, so <laughs> it's... Uh, and with a reed valve, definitely you... You could benefit from a smaller volume. At the moment, at the moment, I I, I did a test years before, so yeah. I made a I made a, a, a complete Simpson engine. It's air cooled and so on, and with a with a Conrad uh, 85 millimeters and a Conrad 95 millimeters. Yeah, and and, the... and I tested against uh, in between two hours, and the smaller volume was way better. That was better. Yes. Yeah. But it's ten years ago, and it was not a racing engine. It no, was exactly. more a simple one. Yeah. So here I want to test what With happens a at a racing engine. engine. And, and what really is it means? And with a real valve. It's also an idea from him. His, his company is a, a club stool racing. It's like a it's like a camping. Yeah, yeah, chair. I, I, yes. I, I see. It. <laughs> <laughs> club stool. Club stool. Oh, I have no light. Where's the light at? So this one is really cool because. Yeah, that's really quiet. And it's that's everything. That's, all. <laughs> that's really that's, good. That's really nice. But they're not. Like most of them are cheap Chinese knockoff dental tools. Made yes, 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 yes. But it's yeah. but this one is stable. It works. Nearly for half a year, and then you have to change the bearings or something yeah, exactly. like that. Yes. Yeah. If, if, if Martin came with this tool, he give it to me, and I said, "Oh wow, what's this? Can I have it? Yes, you can try." It. And I make the first cylinder and say, "Okay, I have to do another one. <laughs> <laughs> please give it to me for one week." No, please, please. You can. He says, yes. "I have one hour. You can do whatever you want. Then I take it with me and I build you one." <laughs> and half a year later, I had the first one. And said, "Okay, that's so crazy." And then we make this one a little bit smaller. Yeah. And Make it perfect. Now it's really cool. Yeah, and it's, it's really nice that you can check up the. So it's it's a short in this direction because yeah, that's the problem. With really, most of really the short. Tool. Yes, this was my idea to to make the screw into the into the little. Yes, yeah, so there's a set screw there. Yes, the and it's so and so it's so small and it's way smaller than all the other. Yeah, tools. exactly. <laughs> So that's a copper cylinder. That's a copper cylinder. I need to Be careful, you, you have yeah. a, lot, a lot of power. Shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's really heavy. That's probably the, the heaviest cylinder I've ever... Yes, <laughs> like, yes. Even compared to cast iron, that's really heavy. Yes, it is. It is a, li a little bit heavier than iron. Yeah. Uh, but it's also really stable. Yeah. And um, I think we don't need a sleeving. No, there will be not. No nickels here, no nothing. We try it like it is. You, you think it's uh, the heat, the, like the heat transfer ability. It's the heat it's, transfer is it's really like, crazy. It's like also twice of the aluminium. Uh, something out of copper, it's a head. Yeah. And it's really way better than aluminium. And that's also really heavy. And yes, uh, it is. It is, but it works really well. Yeah. I love this. No, something like this. No, uh, and what is but this I, think I, uh, I think I saw you using that in, uh, yes. in a video. Yes. Yeah. It's really easy to put it in and make it, then put the other side in, put it back again, and, and then you have a code. But and it's you just, just uh, and you just use your hands for oh, like, need the hands. hammer and with a hand shoe. No hammer, no, no hammer, hammer and just no. hands and yes, push hammer. it around. Bring it around. Then I put it here a little bit together, and then it's so nice that you can yeah. that you can weld it five minutes or a minute later. Exactly, and and this works for like this is a set angle, but you. Uh, you can make like different angles just by yes, yes. I have this too. Yeah. And I order another six that I have all angle I need. Yeah. And yeah. then it's really easy to build a new exhaust really fast. Yeah. It's really easy. I can build an exhaust with these tools and I'm not the best exhaust builder in two hours of time. Yeah, exactly. So two hours that's not uh that's acceptable. Yes, I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We have an exhaust. <laughs> I make uh, marketing for a welding company. Yeah, I do so. If you want to do good welding, <laughs> then use the Gregerson <laughs> welding tool. Uh, I bought it at Rehm, Germany. So go there and buy the stuff <laughs> and weld your exhaust. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, that's a, like, 
Yeah. Katie, the 50cc or the 65 even used to be like the only cylinder with good geometry you could get. Yes, yes. Yeah. I was the first one who used it. Yeah. It was uh, 2009 and I know about the cylinder. I don't want to tell too much where, where I got it from. <laughs> um, and I had it one week later on my engine and the, and the bike was not on the market. No. We only, just, see, it, we only see it at the fair. But the bike was not on the market and I had a cylinder of them on my bike. Yeah, because 2009, that's the year they yes. switched over to that design. That's a, <laughs> that's a fairly massive... <laughs> that's a really massive... <laughs> In contrast to Fritz's... Uh, the, uh, the, the yes, P4. yes, a little. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can take uh, 20 of it and throw it Yeah, through. yeah. So here, I want to show you. So I yeah. make it larger later. It was it was a little bit less, yes. but it was no difference between the open and this one. No, so so it didn't make a difference. With no, a, no, no, in the power band, no difference, zero difference. Crazy. So it makes you think that maybe maybe it's not that important with the how large it is. Yeah, how large? Yeah, unless they're too large or can too be, small. It can, be, it can be really small. Yes. Yeah. The transfer ports can be really small. Uh, in the middle. This is also another one. It's from 2009. Yeah. And also a lot of a lot Slight, of work. Slightly modified. <laughs> slightly. <laughs> nice. That looks really nice. You know. A lot of work. Yeah. Yes. Sleepless yeah. hours. But how? Uh, like with porting like this, and how can you get away with running like an air-cooled cylinder? Yes, it's with, not the best idea, but it no. works. Yeah, um, but um, the biggest problem is with my with my big body, you get so much um, so much heat in it that you have the problem. You you lose so much power yeah, after the first few laps exactly that you have uh, uh, um, at the beginning maybe uh, 16 horsepower. Yeah, and when you when you <laughs> have done uh, 10 laps, you have 13. Exactly, mm, for because yes. it gets so heat soaked. Yes, and then they started. Uh, Welding cooling fins to the uh, to the sides of yeah, the engine. Yeah, ex extra. And now everybody uses it in. Yeah. in so yes, uh, so use it. Oh, now yeah. now I get uh, so so you're that really big guy. Fritz has been talking yeah, about like, like like this. Yeah, I've seen I've seen that engine before, and I uh, now I remember you posting about uh, you you were working with. A really big guy in the. It must have been a long time ago. Oh yeah, it's a long time ago. But uh, I I remember the pictures and I remember you showing a bike with a. That was you. That was okay, my race bike. Okay. Yes, now. Uh, <laughs> that was cool. race bike. Yeah. I really I remember yeah, that then, bike with a cool. Then he was a lot heavier than he is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, also interesting when I when I build my own frames, we make a little. Yes. Oh, you make a little uh, like a little frame, replica. and uh, I can have a look where it have to be more stiff and where it have to be less stiff. Oh yeah. And yes. Yeah, that's a cool. It's really just, cool. So, yeah. so, so put it in your own hands and try. And just uh, gotta hold the camera. Yeah. So now you can feel like I can feel there's not really any twisting here yes. at all. And because uh, you, you can't be too fat though, because there's some twisting here. <laughs> oh, yes. oh, 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 you have to repair. <laughs> yeah, I have to buy a new one. <laughs> Really but cool. It's crazy. Really cool. I'm gonna show this this footage to my girlfriend, as like <laughs> she's always yes. saying, yeah, you've got too much stuff. But uh, you're crazy. Yeah, could have been worse. Say, this guy is yeah. way crazy. Look at you. this guy, and this is in his house. I can say because it <laughs> <Yeah>. is. <laughs> it's all in one house. Yeah, all in his house. <laughs> ah, here I have something nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Oh, 24/7. So that's a that's a 24/7. Oh, fast yeah, system. A, a flipping wheel valve. <laughs> yeah, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. Was it any better? No, no, it was not. At, at, the, at your? Well, I, I haven't tested it properly except for with a blower, so I can't really. It, but it was more power if it's opened. Yeah. Then when it's closed, yes, it is. But um, the problem was always if when you open it, it's like oh. Yeah, because for uh, short time. Uh, yeah. So. Um, Fritz, tell me, I have to uh, have to make the, the inlet track. Yes, the inlet track. I have to make it a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah. And when I make it longer, I have less power. So oh, okay, so it's was a the problem. Catch, catch twenty-two. And when I had, and this is really something interesting. Yeah. I make the, I make it longer. And I make it about five centimeters longer than ten. Yeah. Than fifteen. 
And then I can do this. And I can start the bike like this. And it works. Pum, 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 no problem. It's also something crazy. Honda engine with KDM cylinder. And... And <laughs> <laughs> it welded really well. Yeah. Yeah. But it didn't work well. Oh no. High RPM, you can uh, put the carrot in and... Yeah, and just... Uh, <laughs> yes, for the salad. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And it's, nice. uh, it's on, on this side, not on this side. This is special, but it's okay. You can put it there and have your second engine. Which and I what I was telling you about. Yeah, you about to how... Dish, you have to take yeah, the remove the everything and take off the oil and... That's a disadvantage. And you can use the usual... Uh, uh, so that's a battery, probably, or... It's a, <laughs> like an additional... Uh, like a nuclear reactor of some it's, kind. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, take, take care, my yeah, feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's anti wheelie battery. It's only anti wheelie battery. It's nothing. <laughs> I put a cable in that everybody have a look. Hey, what's this? Yeah. And it's only to make weight on the bike. Oh yeah. And I, and I want nobody to see what it is. <laughs> so and for what it is, <laughs> make the cable on it. Cable. Then everybody, <laughs> what is that? It's your battery. Yes, but you don't have it on while you're riding. No. No, okay, a, you, I don't need it. It's a wireless. second one. Yes, wireless, <laughs> yes. It's only. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and it was like this with this with this weight on the right place of the bike. Yeah. I was a, a second faster. Yeah. It's just I. It's amazing how you can uh, like that part of it, the racing, and how you can feel and like what's going on and. Uh, but this was really makes easy. Changes to go the, out of the corner, go on the gas without this, and it was yeah. like, whoop, and the front wheels popping up. Yeah. It was like oh, huh. and with this it was like. Yeah. And you can go easy out of the corner, and exactly. the front wheel was on the ground, and you can yeah. make good acceleration. And without this, it was nose. Bring with us. We have to speak English, Fritz. <laughs> okay, let's, let's see how you drive now. I always take the, the, the other direction from here. Yes, uh, oh, a few wrong. times too, but it's also a um, uh, possibility to go another way. I should do some kind of an introduction myself. So, uh, Jan has brought me to Salivatech. And what, what, what does Salivatech do? Um, basically, we are printing sand molds yeah. with a huge 3D printer. We can have a look on that later on. Yeah, nice. And uh, for foundries. Um, but we are at the moment we are already um, doing also reverse engineering. Oh, okay. We are pouring spare parts for industrial use for vehicles for very old vehicles. Oh, okay. Um, cool. So right now we have a crankcase in the, in the back from a Lance Bulldog. Nice, 1937 nice. oh. <laughs> and yeah. 10 liters. So you're doing cylinder. So you're 3D printing uh, sand molds <laughs> for <laughs> casting. That's the yeah, yes. yeah. Basically, yeah. that's that's the core of our business. Yeah. And, and, uh, and yeah. casting new parts and uh, also you're as you said you're uh, reproducing old parts by reverse yes. engineering and awesome. exactly awesome awesome. And we are doing all the prototype castings for Jan. Yes. You are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. They do a really good cool job. We yeah. have a lot of nice things. I think about the yeah. cover cylinder yeah. and all the other stuff. Yes, did a lot of nice stuff and really things. You might notice it's still really uncomfortable being uh, being uh, on camera <laughs> around people. <laughs> still, I'm not used to I'm not used to filming around people. I'm. Uh, I usually just film alone in the garage, <laughs> so I find it really difficult. It's pretty, not difficult talking to you guys, but talking to the camera, like introducing something and yes. stuff like that. That's uh, 
Maybe you can go to the doctor and take some tablets. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, I need to take my jacket off at least because I'm uh, yes. already sweating. Because. Uh, These are the, the molds for your cylinder. Yes, this is my cylinder. Yeah. Das ist mein Zylinder hier, das ist mein, mein wassergekühlter Zylinder, den ich aus Simpson GP fahre. Und ich denke, dass die Leute, die das Video Video in Deutschland sehen, auch uh, are able to understand English, so I drive. Das ist der Zylinder, den ich drive für uh, den Simpson GP. Und es ist ein wassergekühlter Zylinder, es ist um, designed by a friend. Und wir haben ein neues Design in den nächsten paar Wochen. Das ist das alte Design. Alright. Ja, yes, weil um, ich einen von den Zylindern habe, weil ich crash one. And make some tests with another one and stuff like this. And now I have only one cylinder that works really well. All right. And I need one because uh, the season begins soon. And now we said, okay, it's possible to pass one. There's, uh, this is a separate part, and that's a separate part. And the cores are also like printed yes. separately. Yes, from, exactly. Uh, In addition, we also have um, a boring basin for oh. that one, so that we have a quiescent filling. Of the of the mold, yeah, um, and we have some other features to to um, uh, separate detrain defects or air bubbles, for example, in front of the filter. There's a so-called bubble trap yeah. with the venting, so that some air and oxide, or just a minimum of oxide, can reach even the casting, and in that way we have a very clean melt. Yeah. You will also see when the metal rises that the, that the surface is like um, like a mirror. Yeah, so it's a cone. And there, uh, there's not even of one little uh, thing to see. No, no, no slag no, or no defect. Pushes. This like your design? You have designed it, or is it a? No, uh, yes, I designed it. I said how the design have to look like, but the engineer did draw it because uh, I, I'm not an engineer. No, I'm not right. able to to but make something with solid works or AutoCAD. Um, no, but you dictated the design yes, and it yes, yes, it's yeah. my design. Okay. And um, the the um, the water flow is from the designer. Oh. I said I, I have my wishes, yeah. and he optimizes it and uh, makes some calculations where how many water goes there. And this is something he can really do good. Yeah. And this is not from me, but the design from the ports and all the stuff and the cylinder and what it's the form is and which engine it fits. It's designed after what what you wanted from the from the cylinder. Like it's yes. your your uh, ideas. And uh, is that the picture you showed me yesterday? Yes. The, yeah, yeah. Yes. So this one is a cylinder. This is a cylinder I drive on my race bike. Oh yeah. And the guys asked me, okay, can I can I do something for Alex when he's coming? <laughs> okay, you can print him a cylinder like this, and it could be a present that you can have a look. Awesome. That's working. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. So this is your from your race bike. The, yes, this is from my race bike. Uh, from that one with the weird uh, rear damper situation. Yes. And, yeah, yeah. and it's the same thing we cast today. Okay. Nice. Thank you. You could put Thank it you. on your. <laughs> yes. I'll cast it at home and. Uh, <laughs> yes, you can do it. You yeah. you can try well, actually, it. Actually, if, if you want to, you can yeah, try it. No problem. Actually, uh, you're free. Yeah. You're free to do everything. <laughs> nice, nice. <Yes>. Thank you. <laughs> Winter at the moment we have a construction site here. So that's yeah. why everything is uh, packed in plastic. Yeah. So that's the print, but we can't really see it now because it's. Uh, yes, but I think we should be able to go inside. Oh yeah? Can we do that now and have a look? Yeah. Could you walk me through the parts here? This is uh... this is the shop box. So um, there you have our. Uh, this, this is our build platform. Okay. Uh, when the printer is adding layer by layer, uh, the platform goes down. Oh yeah. And then the print head um, um, is is printing his stripes. One after another, okay, and just then like lines in the the recoding system. It's called like that. Um, is uh, putting on another layer of sand. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. in that way, we get uh, three our three dimensional yeah, exactly. parts at the end. Uh, the dimensions, the maximum dimensions that we can print are one meter and eighty uh, per one meter per zero point seven meters. So that's so pretty large. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, that's a total of one thousand two hundred and sixty liters, and uh, that is. Completely printed uh, uh, within 16 hours. Well, uh, we have a dramatic system here. So with the other box, it's um, that way. If we have loaded more jobs, if one has finished, the job box gets out automatically. So you don't need an operator or anything. Okay, just the other one gets loaded and it continues to 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 print. The right. next morning, when you come back, you can remove the sand molds from, from that one. Yeah. Load the next job, theoretically, and. Um, then it goes on and on and on and on. Nice. And yeah, so we can take a look inside. Can you make a little pause? The sand is sucked in by the printer. Yeah. And 
Above we have a dosing system for uh, fresh sand and recycling sand. So that sand here, for example, um, or the loose sand around of the printed molds, uh, we will uh, we reclaim it with a vacuum cleaner, uh, industrial yeah, vacuum yeah. cleaner. And um, in that way we can get it back into the process so that we has, have as, as little waste as possible. Little waste as possible. Yeah. yeah. So um, when the sand is dosed, it gets mixed, it gets mixed here. Um, an asset is added since the, the raisin system is a two component system and the asset is the other component. The other component of the That's why the sand looks a little bit like a grayish. And yeah. if you put it away, it becomes uh, it gets uh, a, a more sand-like color back, okay. and so it oxidizes on the surface. Oh. And the sand gets inside here. You have that screw that distributes it all um, evenly over the whole length. Okay, so this distributes one layer of sand. This this part of the machine. Yes, and yes. then and that is our printhead. So that is um, a, 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 a monochrome um, inkjet. Okay. Printed. Okay. That's the second. That's the second component of the. Exactly. exactly. That is the, the, the raisin or, or the, the glue, resin, the yeah. binder, as exactly. we call it in the foundry. And as soon as that's applied, it hardens. Uh, the reaction starts. Exactly. Yeah. It it takes uh, more or less about one hour until it gets um, or the solidification has reached a level that it's um, solid you, you enough to handle, handle it, it. Okay. before it's uh, more like soft, like like a mochi or, oh, okay. or stuff like that. But you can like still that. print layers on top of that, yes. so you don't yes. have to wait between no, each no, 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 no. Oh. We can go straight on. Uh, if you have some uh, molds or cores that have a very um, like, like thin difficult shape, yeah. like um, you, you have a heavy part that is hanging in the basically in the free air, yeah, yeah. there it's a good idea to, to uh, Put there some uh, loose supports. Yeah. yeah. Uh, since uh, the sand can be can get compressed by the the weight of a heavy core or yeah, mold exactly, by yeah. itself, and if you get that small shift, uh, we have some clients for them. It's a problem. Yeah. Since uh, you get a deviation of 0.3 millimeters into your sand mold, and yeah. they say no, no, no. no. That's that's, uh, so that, that, that's not okay. No. Okay. That's why we're also doing uh, dimensional checkings and yeah you. Just yeah. need to, to control yourself over and over again since we are confronted each week yeah. with uh, sometimes crazy shapes <laughs> that we have, if we have never seen before. No, exactly. And, so uh, you gotta adapt to the different. Uh, you gotta know what needs to be done for the various shapes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Hi, Alex. Hello, Frank. Alex. Hello. Hi. Norwegian. Uh, transmission. Yeah. yeah. The video. Here's the furnace. Try not to burn my camera. Yeah, yeah. So quite a bit bigger than uh, mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we can melt here uh, 100 kilogram of aluminum alloy. Oh, yeah, cool. And so that's the maximum that the crucible. Uh, can hold, can hold, and uh, so, uh, to to remove the oxide and the dross from the surface. Uh, That's the same thing as I'm using. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now I need to buy a new one for my kitchen. It's yeah. a good, it's a good, it's a good tool. For this. <laughs> good tool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it works perfectly. Yeah, it, yeah, it does the duty. Does the duty. testing our infiltration um, processes okay. uh, on, on different stuff and also um, so we, we um, try to, to um, not only provide printed normal printed sand molds um, we try to give them also other properties okay. and we did a lot of experimentations with coatings yeah. um, until now we might be the only company that is able to apply a powder coating on sand molds. On the sand molds.
like beer. When you beer in the class, yeah, you don't. No, exactly. <laughs> and also the with, so, you must. with having uh, like the metal has to rise slowly up into yes, the, yes, yes, the yes. mold. Yeah. And that's the secret. That's the secret. visiting a guy somewhere in Germany and uh, he has some really interesting bikes and uh, with a really interesting story connected to all those bikes <laughs> but unfortunately I can't tell you where and who because he's afraid of uh, people coming and stealing stealing his stuff Still here. Yeah. I, I I used to work here on the Volvo engines. Oh, yeah. Those are the crates. Those are the, from the mail. Uh, yeah. Mail service. Oh, there's some stuff uh, in the shelter. Oh yeah. The 16 Volvos. Yeah. There's probably lots of people back home in like or in my area really interested in this stuff. <laughs> Uh, you, you didn't see it before. You have a lot of pipes. Yeah. I had, uh, there was a time I had about 300. And it was everywhere in the workshop. <laughs> and I throw so much away because you need it. It's really like this. If you are on the, so when I'm on the dyno, it's like use another one, use another one, use another one. And then yeah. something like this happens. Nice oh, we won't demonstrate it. Please close the door, Fritz. Uh, look at this wall. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's dangerous. Yeah. Fred told me uh, if I build this room, I should have this uh, wood smaller to do another. Yeah, because closer together. Yeah. The pressure is also could, from top. Yeah, exactly. Could, uh, yes. But it's also a nice way for cheating on the dyno because you can raise the pressure to really high yes, levels. Yes. Yes. Uh, we can. We can make a test. You don't see it on the on the dyno graph. Oh, you don't. Yes, no. I think it, no. it must make more horsepower also. No. We, had, we had it in Italy at Rumi. There was uh, there was uh, overpressure, yeah. and somebody wanted to so enter. Not luft he couldn't open the door. <laughs> it, uh, he opened the door and broke his wrist. Oh yeah, <laughs> the door really? kicked back. Why are your bike on the dyno? Yeah. Um, we want to test uh, which is the difference between our dynos. I have a, a way bigger inertia on my wheel yeah. on my, on my dyno wheel. And we want to test what different is, and also we tuned up some uh, four-stroke bikes for other guys and test something. And we want to see what the promo curve is about because this bike is, is nearly brand new. It got five hours now, and it's uh, making less power than. I think it's making less power, and we want to check what's the difference. Yes, yeah. and also we uh, want to test the pressure. Yes, the pressure. Yes, yes. Yeah, because yeah, this, this is the pressure difference in the air because we can this in, in this room. It's really close. And we can make another pressure. The difference, what's the biggest difference you can do? Oh, I don't know. Much. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's a it's a pressurized dyno room or you can pressurize it. Yes. That's the thing. So kind of special compared to at least my dyno. <laughs> <laughs> for 
really. Uh, no. I, I was working in the factory. In the factory. But not on the pay list. Not on the pay list. And it was the, the, the same with Aprilia. I, I, yeah, I was there at the factory, but I did most of my work at home. Yeah, because you were helping Jan Thiel yeah. with the, the software you developed. Yeah, uh, yeah with, with software and with, with discussing things from is it worth trying this, is it worth trying yeah, Exactly, being someone to bounce ideas yeah. with. And, uh, yeah. yeah, so um, at, 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 uh, at Aprilia we didn't go to the racing, to the, to the racings. Jan stayed on, in the racing department yeah. and the racing teams went through went Europe. To the races. But in, in, in Garelli it was just one team and we went to, with all the people to all the races. Okay, and when the, the Italians saw Jan and me discussing over an argument, yeah. uh, they didn't understand what we were doing. So they all got uncertain, insecure, and oh, okay. so yeah. we had to decide to do that only in private. Yeah, you had to like discuss things in private because. Uh, yeah, so, um, so we were helping Jan at uh, Aprilia with... Um, uh, and he was helping me because I learned a lot. Yeah, of course. I, uh, I, I ideas that I had, I had the best feedback you can ever have. Yeah, yeah. It, exactly. it was really built and really tested. Yeah, exactly, because uh, it's always seemed to me like uh, you've been the guy you have you have all these ideas, yeah. and, uh, and Jan has always been more like the guy who. Uh, oh, yeah, Jan had all the ideas he, as well. He had ideas, but, but he like he, he's more of a like test it and, uh, and yeah, I, I, a situation was completely different. I, yeah. I, I was eager to to learn about engines. I wanted yeah. to know what was happening. Yeah, exactly. Jan had to win the next race. Yeah, exactly. He had to make uh, make make things work. He couldn't spend. Uh, that's probably maybe what I'm trying to say. The difference between uh, being able to like play around with ideas and versus having to make stuff work. Uh, yeah. So you can't experiment with things that might actually not work. No, I, so I, much I, like I, I, I could not say, Jan, I would like to know uh, <laughs> what the whatever's. I would say, Jan, I think this is promising. Yeah, exactly. And, and yeah, would, yeah. 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 Spend time. Maybe. You couldn't ask Jan to like. I, could this be something we could try? It could be yeah. fun. Like <laughs> that wouldn't now, work. On the other hand, at the early way in, in the development of the, the production bikes, yeah, the mopeds, um, they, they borrowed me from Jan. Oh, okay. okay. They borrowed me from the racing department for the uh, development for, for the normal line. Oh yeah, yeah. that was funny. They bought me for two weeks and they paid me six. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to like give advice and, about... Uh, the goal was to make a 50, uh, 75cc engine for the Spanish market. Okay. And the number one in the Spanish market was Honda. Oh yeah, yeah. And they wanted more power and less revs. More so power and less revs. So I made them uh, 1000 revs less and 2 horsepower more. Yeah. And for, 50, uh, for 75 cc, 2 horsepower more is, is quite a That's difference. That's quite a lot, yeah. And also I made um, pipe stampings, the, the half shows, you know. Yeah, yeah. That could be fitted to uh, two 50 cc models and all the 75 models. So oh. instead of Most, six pipes, yeah, they had only pipes. one set. Was it that that with, with, with different... Uh, Oh, okay, to that could fit all the bikes yeah. pretty well, like uh, yeah. yeah, nice. And for that, I, I bought a second-hand car. <laughs> <laughs> for that six weeks of pay you got for the two weeks, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, oh, nice. Well, so after all this, after the racing, after Aprilia, uh, like after two strokes died in racing, what uh, like what did you do after? Uh, uh, there were still carts and, and uh, yeah, carting, and, of course, and, of course. The, 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 the small model engines. Yeah, yeah, have because been world champions since 2000, I think. Yeah, the P40. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's uh, of course I forgot about the, the model engines. Because yeah. two strokes are still alive. Uh, well, well it's, it's a one to five. And what Robby is doing at the moment is uh, he's very good. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's at the level where Jan left in 2007. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, he has yes much more restrictive uh, rules because he cannot use a very variable ignition. He cannot use electronic power valves, power yes. No, it's really restrictive. Uh, he has to use a thirty millimeter carburetor. Yeah. And, uh, so, but maybe like having strict frame, like a strict, uh, uh, strict like a small box to work within, that makes you have to come up with. Uh, 
Like uh, you, you, you go always to the limits of your restrictions. Yeah, you have to yeah. think about uh, maybe think in a kind of a different way. Or, uh, yeah. Sebastian, Alex, Dr. Sebastian, 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 for the handlebars, yes. yes, and that that's to make kind of a, like a semi-independent suspension. And could you explain the reason for for why? In the, the reason is a bumpy road. If, if, the, if the bumps come one side, other side, one side, other side, you everything get on the handlebar. Yeah. And so a little uh, flexibility in the swing arm makes it possible you have a better ride. Better ride. But at the excessive point, it should be so less flex. So real, we come up to get traction here and go around the corner. Yeah, exactly. So it acts like a differential in a way, yes. because you can take pressure off the, yeah. Lo lots of development and testing to get to... And it's very careful to build such a swing arm. This swing arm is only welded on length. Okay. Not so, because if the torsion on the, on the on the tubes makes a crack. Ah, okay. It's one one tube one without tube. any any well. No, it's not welded. Uh, in this, in this yeah. direction, and it's difficult it to to build frames. this. So hmm? it goes for all frames. Yeah, it goes for only yeah. the length. Only the length. Yeah. And the point, if the damper uh, if the damper goes to uh, to bump, yeah. everything makes a big level. Yeah, so, exactly. So there's lots of force. And so the underside of the tube must be very clear. No welding on it because you have a welding point. It, it cracks on the welding. Yeah, exactly. There's a stress stress rise. Yeah. Maximum pro progression comes if this angel between this point, this point, and this point is between 30 and 45 degrees, and you get the maximum progression to the temper because this point goes farther over the over the travel yeah and that's important because these bikes have no uh, no pro link for the temper no, exactly. it's connected directly it's the, connected directly and this is <coughs> very important yeah. it's also a special temper who has in the hydraulic and and hydraulic bump stopper if you okay. go on the end you can hear it yeah. And then the second, the second tempo piston goes in the end. Make okay. And this, uh, the second uh, tempo piston has also shims, and you can adjust. So you can how, adjust how, how hard it goes. How hard the bump stop uh, the the hydraulic bump stop. The hydraulic bumps are very fine. Very <laughs> fine. Oh yeah. I've, I've, I've known nothing about uh, suspension, so uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it sounds. Uh, I learned this on sidecar and uh, yeah. on, on rally cars. On rally, rally cars, because you have lots of experience with rally driving. Yes. Yeah, the uh, the hydraulic bumpers are the That's best. The what's uh, what's good for a gravel car? Because yeah. on a on an off road rally car, you need much movement in the body if you steering and braking. You get a wide move to the front axle, yeah. the car goes in a drift, you go on gas, on throttle, the, the wide is on the back axle, you go with yeah. much traction. Yeah. And also you have the hard bumps and with the, wide, with, with the light springs, it only was on the button. Yeah, exactly. And then you drive many times on the hydraulic bumpers. So you need a car to move like to to move the weight around better like that's yes. the yeah, yes. yeah that's the reason why you must uh, you, you use light springs light springs. Light, light springs and then the hydraulic bump stops do not have that the hard yes. stuff like light springs and and uh, yes. and softer bump stops in a way at 
at uh, Jeffrey's place <laughs> and we've been uh, talking shit all night. Uh, no. I'll, I'll start this over. Uh, <clears throat> we're, we're now at Jeffrey's place and we were visiting his workplace or his workshop earlier and uh, we're drinking. Yeah. <laughs> of, cheers. Cor of course. Of course. <laughs> cheers. 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 <laughs> And uh, this is uh, uh, a milestone on my channel and a milestone for me because this is the first time uh, first time I can see and hold uh, Fritz's uh, FOS or Fools cylinder in my hands. And uh, so this is this is a big moment for me. Really a big moment it is. Yeah, it is because I've seen pictures of this cylinder uh, I, d I can't, like, when did you create this? The, uh, the idea was 1980, I think. 1980. And we built it in about 2010 in the University in Dresden, in Germany. Yeah. And I, um, I saw the pictures and heard his description of the cylinder in... Um, it's probably like seven years ago or so, when I first like saw that. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, and now, now I'm holding it in my hands. So uh, don't drop it. <laughs> I won't drop it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off the camera and spend some time with this cylinder now. <laughs> you said that the thing people are like the, the first thing people notice is the cooling system. I'm not saying it's the first thing. <laughs> what I'm doing? Oh shit, man. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what I'm doing? This is your creation, the FOS cylinder or the full mm. cylinder. What does FOS stand for? Uh, uh, Fritz Overmars, and then you can fill it in, special or scavenging or whatever you want. Yeah, Fritz Overmars it, scavenging. It was on my racing bike in 1972, before I had this idea. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> <laughs> try to keep sober. Yeah. Um, I always thought it was uh, standing for some like fully open uh, scavenging system or something like that. But it's just fits over Mars. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So, so what's different about this cylinder to every other cylinder you've ever seen in a two-stroke? Uh, it's the uh, completely. Uh, symmetrical transfers yeah. and that's exhaust ports. That's right. And uh, the advantage of that is more port area. More port area. With Sorry. less timing. Less timing. Or more, no, more port area. Yeah, area with the same timing. Same timing, more port area. Yeah. And also, you have a symmetrical. As as the transfers are symmetrical and the exhaust ports are symmetrical, the. Um, the heat in the like the piston heating and should be everything symmetrical. Yeah, exactly. Even, even without any cooling, the piston would stay around. Exactly. So we don't need oval pistons in. Uh, you shouldn't need that. No. In this system, because no, there's. That's right. You shouldn't need them. No, there should be uh, even heating of the piston mm -hmm. all the way around. So the most important thing is the uh, is the extra transfer area and now no the extra extra port area. Yeah, for all the ports. That's right. Which should, like, this should produce when it's working properly. It should be able to produce uh, twenty percent more revs with the same level of cylinder filling. Yeah, exactly. Same torque for, but just higher. Yeah. Which means uh, a lot more power. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it should mean twenty percent more when when the filling is at uh, the same level that I hope to to achieve. Yeah. Then there should be twenty percent more power. Then what you can achieve in a normal two-stroke engine. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. theory. Yeah. And also, do you know what I think? We got no footage of Fritz Overmars in some videos. No, exactly. And so until this weekend, it's a lot of footage. Yeah. From this guy. Suddenly, he's uh, all over. <laughs> all yeah, over yeah. The... That that's his fault. That's his fault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm sorry. Yeah. But also the the cooling channels where you have the. Uh, the coolant entering the cylinder here, yeah. then going into the yeah. coldest part yeah, there's of the uh, a circular channel inside the transfers. Yes, and and then it goes up, up, and that's that's because you want the, the coldest coolant to to be in contact with the coldest mm, part. Well, I, I wanted um, the how the distributed. Yes, the, uh, the distribution of the. 
Ja, uh, ja ik, uh, poeh, ik kan van de woorden, no, dit is daar maar niet. Maar je wilde to uh, enter de cylinder at the bottom. Ja. Yeah. Where, where things are cold. Mm -hmm. And then cool this area, which normally isn't cooled. Cool like everything, every area that I can just, get at. Yeah, there's, exactly. There's, cool. there's one uh, place between the transverse and the exhaust that's not too thick. That's, Im that's impossible to get that's to. impossible to cool, but yeah. I have to get as close as possible to close that possible. area. Going through the, the inside of the transverse, yeah. and then up into the... And you have... And now we have a bunch of uh, the all, all, all the parallel bores. Yes, vertical channels yep. going up into into the head insert, which is recessed into the bore here. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's to get maximum cooling of the squish band. That's right. And, but keep it away from the combustion chamber. Oh, no, not really. Uh, not really. Uh, no, it, it enters into the squish band from all sides here. Yeah. And then uh, it meets this, do, those, uh, those holes. Yeah. One comes out again. It takes a loop and uh, yeah. into the head. And you're running a, a tiny spark plug. Uh, is it no, an it's, a, it's a 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter spark plug, yeah. So, yeah. Like typical four stroke uh, small engine. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's right. Yeah. I, I think this can make, when it's working, when you get past all the. All the like the difficulties with a hump in the power band. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that solution would have been to have power valves, but yeah. that would. Um, Really? Give, give uh, uh, much less cooling than I have now. Exactly, you lose all the cooling yeah. in maybe the most important area where mm. the hottest yeah. exhaust gases are. That's right. So, but uh, you made some pipes with the uh, ATAC valves. Yeah. yeah. That helped some. Where are the pipes? I'm not sure. It's. Uh, I'll bring one. Yeah. Okay. So here are uh, this. Uh, this is one of the. Oh, you, we can put it on. Yeah. So this is one of the pipes. Yep. Of course, the pipe, the, the engine runs two. The cylinder has two pipes because mm -hmm. there's two exhaust ducts, yep. and uh, and these are ATAC valves or kind of. They were heating valves, but now they are ATAC valves. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, so they're they're used for to add. In this configuration, they're adding infinite volume to the exhaust. Yeah, uh, you, you you can say it like that. Yeah. I, I would say that uh, the returning pulse that is disturbing everything here. Yeah. We can let it out. We can let the pressure out here. Yeah, exactly. So now that the pulse has uh, the pulse will leave. Yeah. Leave the exhaust here. It's a bit. It's a bit. Yeah. No, yeah okay. <laughs> Stiff to. Uh, but that's the point of, and that's like Honda's uh, kind of like Honda's yeah, ATAC it's, it's uh, gonna, system. Yeah, exactly what Honda did with the ATAC system. They, they had a, a small volume here. Yeah. We haven't tried the volume yet. We have just tried the valves. Yeah, exactly. And it brought about a hundred RPM extra. We oh, did, yeah. Before the hump. Uh, Before the hump. Uh, yeah. Made trouble. Yeah. And this this system, I have a story about. Uh, there's a guy on Moped Army. He's called J. He actually, J. Bot, and he's uh, he has a robot band where he's uh, he's um, the thing is he's uh, he's made the whole band of robots. So they're playing all the instruments, and he's the vocalist, and he's um, they've taken him prisoner prisoner. So he's a slave to the robots, uh -huh. but he he's also making mopeds and. Um, he made uh, a system like this for uh, one of his mopeds, and he called it uh, the donkey dick. He had this big uh, <laughs> like radiator hose yeah. <laughs> on the pipe, so the donkey dick system. But yeah, but same same system. But uh, you haven't tried uh, connecting the two with a volume. Yet. No, we we have uh, an infinite volume at the moment. Yeah, and we could have connected the left and the right, yeah. but we haven't got round to that. No, exactly. And, uh, and now the next step in, because uh, uh, Fritz is struggling with the same thing that I've been struggling with many times, and that's getting past the hump in before the power band, like uh, area in the RPM, like the point in RPM where the pipe is working against the engine, uh, the, like the worst, where it's doing exactly what it's not supposed to do, yeah. uh, in a way. Mm, that's right. Yeah, so that's the problem with this this cylinder now, to get past that hump. Uh, and you're yeah. going to do some pressure yeah, testing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
every two stroke has that problem. Yeah. But it's worse with this because I have so strong exhaust pulses. Exactly. The cost of the the duct geometry. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> the better you make. It seems like the better you make. The exhaust duct geometry, the worse the hump gets. Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that's that's the problem. And but you're going to do some pressure testing. Uh, um, we have material to put a pressure sensor here in the head. We have, yeah. to, we have to make a new head for that, but one hole less. Exactly. So yeah. there's material enough. Yeah. But that, that can be done. Yeah. Yeah. And and also. Uh, Monitoring the pressure in the crankcase while running. Yeah, that's not so much of a problem, but we can do that too. Yeah, just to get some numbers and no. maybe get some ideas of uh, where the problem, what could help the problem in a way, or something like that. Just in, get some data. In, in, independently of the problem that we are facing now, we, I've always wanted to measure the, the pressure measure in, the, in pres the head. Yeah. Because uh, with that, I can uh, manage the ignition advance. Exactly, you can let, you let, let the electronics charge the, the best possible ignition. Exactly, because you can, uh, have, if it's fast enough, you can uh, measure the highest pressure point versus RPM from yeah. the previous when cycle and use that for the next cycle. As I, the I, 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 with the pressure sensor here in the head, I can see when the exhaust pulse returns and if it returns before exhaust closure or the after. Yeah, exactly. and, and this way you can say I need more advance and need this advance. And, and, and I do not need to measure temperatures anymore no, because no. they are just bent age. Exactly, you're just measuring the... So uh, I, I, that when it functions, I, I cannot even uh, say anymore I've got so much great uh, degrees of advance because no. I don't know it no, and exactly. it changes it's just, every time. It's optimal for, uh, for uh, just to... Uh, just to manipulate the timing of the exhaust pulses yeah. to make them return the, at the, the right the, point. The, the electronics uh, that get the pressure sensor should decide uh, must the next pulse be faster or slower. Slower, exactly. Yeah. So decide how much energy energy should be spent in here and how much should be uh, sent to the exhaust to yeah. make it. Faster or slower, mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. Yeah, no, faster or well, slower well, is not the, the right expression. No, it, when it's it better start, to uh, start it sooner or later. Yeah, exactly, oh. when it starts or when, uh, yeah. Yeah. When, when it starts, that's the mm -hmm. thing, because you can't do anything about how fast it moves. When not, it not so much, no, no, no that's right. No. Except maybe heat the pipe externally yeah, with uh, extremely uh, fast heaters. Uh, uh, <laughs> or change the mixture. Yeah, or change the mixture, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can't slow it down with really fat mixtures or lean it out. Or, but, uh, no, but, yeah. As I said, a milestone. A milestone. And uh, I'm really looking forward to... For you, I'm really... <laughs> I'm really looking forward to uh, continuing the conversation about this engine and, uh, and other ideas. Throughout the night and tomorrow okay. and the next day and uh, yeah, we've still got a lot of bottles to finish. Yeah, okay. Schaffer from the company Lang Tuning from Germany and this is my 50cc Vario Mari bike. It's a little crazy project. Uh, I started with a friend from Switzerland because he built engine and engine cases. His uh, name is Martin Schwaner. I'm really proud to work with this guy because it's real fun to ride a 50cc that's always loud and it always has power from the bottom to the top. <laughs> so this is a KTM bike? Yes, it's an old KTM bike yes. from 2007. So the cylinder is the only part left of the actual engine that's supposed to be in there now. No, but, uh, no, also no, not. not. Okay, so no. it's nothing. It's just a completely custom engine. I think you have to turn the bike around to show the show the show what it's really about. This is a 50 cc dirt bike with a with a variator. Yes, with a variator. It was a 450 before. The cylinder is a KTM, but a 50 cc, so it's not the cylinder that's no, supposed exactly. to be in the bike. And 
And there's no clutch on here, so you're, just like on snowmobiles, you're using the belt as the clutch. Yes. For, just for starting, getting off the line. Yes, for starting and getting off the line. So those few meters are a little bit a problem, and you have to be careful in the first few meters, but I think at 10 kilometers per hour, then it's no problem. That then you no can problem. go, and then you can ride. Yeah, exactly. And so the start is a little bit a problem, and on uh, races like um, they have the Euro Nations Cup, a lot of riders from Italy and Spain ride bikes like this, and they start like, they keep up the rear wheel with no grip and they let it spin for five seconds yeah, exactly and then, then the gate they, falls uh, down and then they, they uh, put the weight on and, off the line. and it's really yeah. fun and it's uh, really um it's cool how fast the 50 cc can be yeah yes i i did think about it a few years uh, before but then i um go right with the with the bike of my friend martin schwaner yeah, yeah. just in cases and i think okay that's really cool yeah. i keep smiling all day long a 50 cc yeah. Uh, to ride motocross is really cool, and it's yeah. also possible uh, to hit big tables and stuff yeah, exactly. with, with a chassis like this. And the engine is powerful enough. some bad news for uh, again I have some bad news uh, the idiot in charge of uh, booking flights has booked a flight for uh, tonight reaching that flight would have been impossible because uh, there's not enough time to go from here to Leipzig so I had to book a new flight but I couldn't find any flights like on Sunday unless I wanted to fly down to Turkey and be there for half a day and uh, and spend the whole Sunday uh, on airports and, and pay insane amounts of money so I'm leaving tomorrow morning really early or actually leaving tonight and uh, and that's a real bummer because I was really looking yes, forward is. to uh, the stuff we were SDS going to do Hunterbite. yeah we were going to do some like uh, uh, like a tuner tuning battle thing yes. with a uh, tuning battle on a dyno where we where we do a lot of cylinders and everybody show his skills and stuff like this. Yeah, and uh, so that would have been a really cool experience. But I'm, uh, I'm, I'm planning to go, like, uh, travel back here maybe this summer and uh, meet up again. And, You're uh, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And, uh, but I've, uh, well, this is not the outro, so, uh, so I'll leave the I've had a great time stuff for the outro. Because so, <laughs> this is not the outro, but... Uh, just wanted to let you know that uh, there was more stuff planned for this video, but uh, an idiot screwed up the flights. <laughs> stupid, stupid people. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. Just thank you. Thank you for the beers, for the food, for the hospitality, for the awesome conversations, for the shared knowledge. Just thank you. Thursday night at Jeffrey's place. Well, actually, it was more Friday morning. We were discussing the challenges with the full uh, cylinder and uh, how to overcome them. And uh, Jeffrey and John had a proposal. And I thought they were joking. They were not. And the faith of the full cylinder is in my hands now. Jeffrey will be shipping the rest of the engine. This is both extremely exciting and nerve-wracking at the same time. <laughs> See you next time.